John, it's uh, been six years since PDA was launched. We're here in Ohio tonight. You just finished the panel. What's your observations? Did you think we'd see PDA six years uh, following Roxbury? Well, I, I knew we had to have PDA six years following Roxbury because one of the great challenges in the Democratic Party is that if activists leave the Democratic Party to the people in Washington, they will always make it a compromised centrist, even center-right party. So you always have to have an organization that goes out and demands from the grassroots that, that the Democratic Party stand for something, that it stand uh, not merely for, you know, nice days and sunshine, but for peace and justice, single-payer health care, all the issues that PDA focuses on. So I knew that PDA or something like it would exist. What's exciting to me when I come to a, a conference like this is that there are so many activists coming from so many different places across this country. Since coming to the PDA conference, I've run into a woman from Bisbee, Arizona, which is on the Mexican border. I have also run into people from upstate New York who are just, you know, a stone's throw from Canada. So we got people, you know, from the whole breadth of the country, Californians and people from Massachusetts. This is a national organization. It is a diverse organization. Uh, it is also an organization that I think is on the cusp of its most important moment. You know, the, this is the important thing to understand. Activist groups uh, always have an easy time when they are opposing a bad president when they are opposing a president who everybody, at least within the group, knows that uh, they have a big problem with, that they maybe even despise and they, they really want to defeat. And then George Bush was the perfect player in that regard. Where activist groups face a challenge is when they have a president that they don't want to hate, that they want to support, that they want to see succeed. And when that president is not doing the job, is not doing enough, that's where it gets difficult. You have to figure out how to challenge, how to question, uh, how to push. And I don't think there's any group today that's as good at challenging, questioning, and pushing Barack Obama as PDA. And what so that's why this is such an important conference. For full disclosure, you were out early on, and we were honored when you uh, gave PDA one of the mentions of one of the best progressive groups early on. Mm -hmm. What are some of those little victories you can point to? Folks that may not know PDA, are there any little well, victories you can point to? Yeah, I think, I think that PDA has, uh, from its founding, been the conscience of the Democratic Party. And, and I would go a step further than that. I think it's been the conscience of our politics because PDA uh, doesn't really limit itself to the Democratic Party. It's, it's very, very active on issues that go far beyond uh, the parameters of a convention or a, a state conference or something like that. And where I think PDA's great victories have been, uh, have been, uh, to my mind, uh, threefold. First off, uh, PDA raised the issue of impeachment uh, more than any other group and kept it on the agenda. And frankly, it, to my mind, forced the better part of 50 members of the U.S. House uh, ultimately to sign on and co-sponsor some form of impeachment resolution against somebody in the Bush administration. It, it, without PDA's activism, I don't think we would have begun to have the discussion about accountability. Now, we didn't win that fight, but uh, the fact of the matter is that 100 years from now, historians who go back and look at the congressional record uh, will see those lists of dozens of members of Congress who said that George Bush and Dick Cheney and Alberto Gonzalez should be impeached. And I think that's a very big deal. It's, it's a part of the history of this republic that the PDA, the PDA, above all, had a profound impact on. So that's one thing. Number two, I think that PDA, uh, in coordination with California Nurses Association, uh, really kept single payer alive. Now, I'm not, it's not just those two groups. I, PNHP and other groups have been great, but uh, I, I do see PDA as the one organization that recognized throughout the entire struggle uh, the need politically to keep, PD, to keep single payer Medicare for all as a frontline issue within the Democratic Party. So that's two. And the final thing I would say is that PDA was right about Afghanistan before anybody else. Uh, not before, there were a couple of people criticizing it, but as an organization, uh, it was out front. And to my mind, the, there's going to come a day, and it won't be that far off, when uh, Afghanistan will be a fundamental issue in the republic. That's tragic, but it's true. Uh, it's going to be a Vietnam. And when that happens, again, we will ask, you know, well, who was telling us the truth? Who was telling us what we should be doing? Uh, before everybody recognized the crisis, who, who gave us the way out. Uh, and PDA was in the forefront of that, has been in the forefront of that. And if by some wonderful chance 
we get out of Afghanistan before it turns into a Vietnam-style quagmire, uh, it will be because of PDA and because PDA went to uh, members of Congress who knew it was wrong but didn't necessarily have the guts to stand up and say, if you do stand up, if you sponsor an anti-war resolution, uh, we'll be behind you. We'll have your back. And, uh, and I, I, wouldn't, I, I just think it is very, very dangerous uh, politically and uh, truthfully to underestimate the impact that PDA has had on members of Congress, particularly on the Afghanistan issue.